Um, I guess we'll call our meeting to order. Does anybody bring any public comments today to the meeting? Does anybody have anything to discuss? Today? I, I got one that's always curious to me is why won't we start this meeting out with the Pledge of Allegiance? Start it out what? With the Pledge of Allegiance, no thing. I guess we never have since I've been here. The Most government meetings and a lot of other meetings are. I mean, I'm just curious. Yes, the Wabash Ice City meetings do. That's something we can uh, maybe discuss here. It's all up to you guys. We've got a flag, right? It's never been done since I've been here, but... Okay, I mean, is there a reason? I no, I guess not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's never been brought up before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had. No, not that I know. Oh, maybe that was at a township meeting. I'm sorry. No. Um, anybody else have anything you want to bring to the meeting today? If not, we'll move on to the agenda. I'll move approval of the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries on that. Move approval of the consent agenda. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries on the consent agenda. And next, the uh, watershed one plan. We have an attachment for that. Yep, the uh, dark gray sheet. <coughs> Treasurer's report. Uh, just an update. Um, I don't know if we have all the checks gone through yet. So this should be uh, up to date now because all the checks have gone through the payment we made almost two months ago. Do you have any questions? There wasn't a whole lot activity in the last month? Um, well, we are, uh, for the Treasurer's Report, basically we invoice every quarter. So we will be in, we sent out a reminder the end of uh, September that the quarter's over, so we'll be receiving invoices. So um, the payments that went out um, this last month, that was for the second quarter that ended the end of June, and then we approved in our August meeting, and then the policy committee approved in their August meeting. And so then we got the payments out um, late August, and they, they're just not all over. Uh, cashed yet at our September meeting. So I uh, just, <clears throat> under the 2018-19 Loot River, shows that we got a negative balance of 1,061. Yep, um, because we spent over our 25%, or our 50%, and we're waiting on our 40%, next 40% from the county, or from the state. Okay. Because, yeah, I see only deposits of 425, but the 851, it's still. Yep. The last yeah. two, um, actually, disbursements aren't, haven't got yet, correct? The right. 340 and the 885? The 340, 340,000 will be coming here shortly. Okay. And that, that's actually number two on our agenda there for the. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you just need approval on the treasurer's report for now? So moved. Okay, on second. Second. Favor of the motion to approve the um, treasury report. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Next is the uh, update on the financial reconciliation. First, fifty percent. So when we use their fifty percent, then before we get the next forty, Bowser had to do a financial reconciliation or grant reconciliation um, after over a month of working on that with Bowser it has been finally approved there there's some things that they wanted some additional information or they wanted either us or our partners because we get all the invoices from all the other districts and stuff um, needed some adjustments to some of the documentation whether uh, it didn't have dates on or didn't 
have uh, some of the billing from the contractors. They wanted more itemization of the stuff in there, or the contractor may have just put an invoice date, but not the actual date that the the work was done. So just little things like that needed adjustment and, and uh, clarification. Um, and we are, after getting all this feedback from Bowser, we have adjusted how we're requesting our invoices from all the other entities to make sure that all that stuff is on there to begin with. So the, we did pass the grant reconciliation and they're doing their paperwork for uh, sending us the next 40% on that grant. First time around is a lot of learning curves so. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, we, we do this all the time for our other grants, but this is a, a big one where we have all these other people yep. uh, contributing uh, invoices and things like that. It's a lot, of, lot more work but it's also a lot more money coming in to our landowners too. So it's a benefit for the Winona SWCD, you feel? Do that extra work, you said? Oh yeah, we're, we're bringing in more money than we've had before for yeah. the landowners, so. Okay. And then uh, we have an update on the uh, the total plan for 21? Um, I, I don't think there's a, really anything new on that either. Um, the only update, I guess, is we're going to be having a policy committee meeting in late November, uh, November 23rd. Um, we'll probably have a planning work group meeting before then also. Um, the back page of your, your handout is kind of a Update of where we're at right now with that 50% being spent. The, uh, the table there shows each of the different categories in the, in the grant plus the RCPP cost share, the federal cost share, because we also manage, we don't manage any of the funds, but our technicians are working on those projects also. Um, and that's just for the um, one watershed, one plan stuff. So the back shows um, with the cost year is the least amount spent, uh, which is normal because you have to do all your um, planning and design and everything else before you can actually do the project. So most of the technical, what is it, about 67% uh, of the technical assistance money is spent. Um, most of the project, or 69% of the project development is spent. 92% of the grant administration is spent but only 24% uh, of the cost share is spent. And like I said, that's kind of normal because you have to do all this other stuff up front before you actually can do the projects themselves. And then just a reminder, the, uh, do I have it on there? So the, the, between the uh, cost share and yeah. technical assistance, that's 90.3% of the, the grant. Um, the combination of the grant and the RCPP money. So even though those others are spent a lot more, it's still a smaller percentage of the actual grant. Okay, that's kind of important to show that um, how that's broken down. I've never seen it broken down like that in that way before. So, you know, that it's not all spent on an administration and technical. Right. Each, that's shows how much in each percentage wise. And in those technical assistance numbers, that also includes the nutrient management planning and um, soil health and cover crop work with individual landowners. So that really needs to be considered on the ground too because the cover crop is on the ground and the, and the uh, nutrient management is on the ground. It's, working with the landowner and putting together the plan of how they're going to manage their nutrients off, off their peatlot or whatever they got there. Okay, that it for the uh, one plan? Yep. Okay. Um, we'll move on to the cost share contracts and um, grants. 
I'll share assistant contracts attachment. So your big long sheet. Um, this, the side with all the yellow on is the, I guess, uh, with a couple different tables on. That's the cost year, and, and everything was approved last month that's on there. So there's no new ones. Just wanted to let you know that um, basically been surveying and developing the final designs for these projects, and hopefully a couple of them weren't hoping to get done yet this fall. Um, that's all there is on that on number one of the. We've had some uh, fantastic weather for this kind of work. Yep. That's why we're trying to rush through this meeting too, so you guys can get back out in the field. Perfect weather. Okay. The number two is the cover top. Yeah. Where's the pitch attachment is that? No. That's the back of what we just looked at. So right now we have seven cover top contracts for 280 acres. Um, Lance has been working with, uh, I think he said 33 or 34 people, right, that he's been going around with. Um, some of them are just looking for information and doing it on their own, um, which is great. It's what we really want in the long run. Um, some of them are just not meeting the qualifications, whether it's, uh, we have a, one guy that's very, very interested, but he only has a one year lease and wouldn't be able to fulfill a three year contract with us. So he'll probably just do it on his own. Um, there's a few others that have already been implementing it or, or, or implanted it this, this season, so they're not eligible. They have to sign up and be approved before they do any of the planting. Um, and then there's some that, are, that wanna do or that have been doing it with uh, just rye, and the only way to be eligible for more is if they if they want to be more diverse. And some of them just don't want to be more diverse. But the biggest thing is, the later you do it in the season, the less diverse your mix can be. So, a lot most of our normal corn coming off is going to be too late to get real diverse after plant after harvest. But we do have some more money. Um, we have money in the drinking water protection for both Southeast Minnesota and Whitewater. Um, we do have more money available through both those grants. So there's more money available for this cover crop assistance than, uh, than we have, app or is it all going to be spent? I, I don't know if it'll all be spent right now. Like I said, some of them that have shown the interest, they just didn't qualify. They weren't eligible for numerous reasons. Because they want to put it on, they can't put it on, they don't want to put it on lease ground, you said? Well, the, the, the one that was really interested, he only has one year lease. Yeah. And the cost share contract is for three years. Yeah. So he decided not to because he's not sure if he's going to have the land next year. Yeah, I understand. But, um, you know. Is it possible then that you can get the landowner to sign that contract and then he just puts in the contract if he rents it to anybody else? He that... could, but it doesn't sound like landowner's interest in doing okay. it. Okay. So in order for him to be able to sign a contract, would he have to have a two-year contract on rental? What, if, what would happen if he would have signed up for cost share on cover crops and didn't have it next year? Then he, the most likely the board would have to ask for that money back. Okay. Because it's it's a requirement. Uh, it's a requirement that it has to be a three year, three year planting. It doesn't have to be on the exact same acres. It can be on any acres that they're running. But um, there'd be no way we could get around that. Like, no. Uh, it's, it's Other than have the landowner sign for it. Yeah. 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 Well, we're still working with a number of people. Like I said, he's got 33 or 34 people on his list that he's been working with. So okay. hopefully we can come up with a few more. Yeah, because I see um, uh, 
I've been in Wisconsin this last week, and there's a lot of it being put down, a lot of drills in the fields. Yep. And, and there's there's a lot going on that we're not cautious. Yeah. Which which yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, it just shows that people are really wanting to do it and are seeing a value of it. Okay. Number three, um, clean water fund. We have a new grant. Um, it's actually one grant agreement, but it's for two different things. One's the local capacity services and the other is the buffer law. Those are both clean water fund um, grants. And what, the way these work is it comes as one grant agreement, but all the reporting, uh, planning, tracking, everything is, has to be done separate. So even though it's one grant agreement, it's really two grants. So we, we just need your approval on those. I'll move Please. approval. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries on the Clean Water Fund. Uh, local Capacity Service? That, that was for those two. Oh, that was? Yep. The Buffer Law Implementation? That covered that? Yep. That, that's where it's one grant agreement, but it's oh. for two different grants. And if you remember, I think we talked about it last month, that buffer law implementation was 20000 but because of the budget cuts in the Clean Water Fund, um, they, they, had to, they cut it 14%, and which brought it down to 7, 17 to That was cut because of the, of the state yeah. short funds? Uh, Not yeah. the general fund, but the Clean Water Fund. Yeah. Um, the general fund will find out about that this winter. Okay. Or next spring or next summer. That could they, be cut also, though. It's very possible. And that's uh, something, yeah. That, the next is new business. Um, Mississippi Winona La Crescent Watershed One, Watershed One Plan Policy Committee. So they're trying to get that started now in uh, La Crescent. Yep. So the, the application was approved by Bowser in late August. Um, and what we got to do now is, is appoint somebody, a primary and an alternate to the policy committee. And we're hoping to have a policy committee meeting sometime yet this fall. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'd like to do. And so we need a primary and an alternate for that. Um, it's probably going to be monthly meetings when we start for the for the first year or two. It'll probably be a monthly meeting. So, do we have uh, somebody that would like to take that on of the of the uh, supervisors? And if if you are uh, wondering, everybody but Jerry is in the watershed. Is in this because this is the Mississippi Winona La Crescent. So it covers everything in the county except for the, the Red River watershed. <coughs> so all of you really are in it, except you. The meeting nightly, or they meet during the day? Nothing has been set yet. It's normally been during the day. I got a comment on this um, because we're a large portion of this, and it says primary and alternate. I'd like to see the committee adopt a policy that the primary and, and alternate go to all the meetings for the simple reason that if the primary can't go, the alternate is up to speed on this. Otherwise, sometimes when you go as an alternate, you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, unless that's already in there where we can send them without. You, you can. You can, but it'd just be one vote. One vote. I understand yes. that, but. I'm saying that the, yeah. the alternate should get paid just like the primary for going. So that'll be up to our board, not up to the policy committee. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is that's what I'd like to see happen okay. so that both of our members are up to speed. Yep. So if the primary can't make it, the alternate can step in and make a rational decision because he's been informed on 
the whole process. Yeah. Are you alternate for Brook River? No, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I am. Who is? I don't know if we have an alternate. Yeah, we do. I might be. <laughs> but Root River don't bother me so much because you got a whole vast majority. But I'm saying is that we cover a big part of this. Yeah. Most of this is in Winona County, and, and we should be well informed. Yeah. That's a good point. So um, don't mind me. I'm just over here bleeding like a stuck pig. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I just reached up and scratched the back of my neck. I don't know what I had. It must have had a little scab or something there. Cal, yeah, dang, it just started running down my neck. Couldn't get it to stop. <laughs> You're not on blood thinners. No, no. Unless vodka counts. Got <laughs> <laughs> a little of that. <laughs> Should have brought some with you. I could have. Um, right, so I volunteer to be one of them. It doesn't matter whether I'm the primary or I would nominate Bill, but uh, he doesn't seem to be. I don't know, he's not here. He's not here like <laughs> he ran away. He is he's primary. Well, <laughs> now's a good time to do it. He can't say no. I nominate <laughs> Bill. Any second? Second. He yeah. said. <laughs> you're actually your appointment? You appoint yeah, him? I, I thought I, I appoint him. Yeah. Okay, I appoint <laughs> Bill. But, and that's one reason I have to join him because I don't know what's going on anyway. So I, I think he'd be a good representative. But he's got time. He does so much time fishing. Go <laughs> yeah, he can cut out a day of fishing or whatever. <laughs> Did you hear that, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> I don't say yeah, so he's good. He's doesn't have his ear engaged in either. <laughs> okay, um, so Jerry would do the alternate, or do you want to be the primary? No, I. You're the primary and you have the and I probably, you know, I wouldn't have to go to every meeting because yeah. I have somewhat of an understanding of the whole thing with the Red River, but um, definitely would attend a lot of them. Our, our initial thought right now is we'd probably be in St. Charles. That's kind of a central location that actually has real good meeting space. St. Charles Community Center. Yeah. Yeah. But of course that decision would be based on policy committee input, but that seems to make sense to me and, and others that it's a central location, it's a nice So what, co what counties is this? Uh, Houston, Winona? Homestead, Harvest, Houston County, and Winona County. Darryl, Oh, yeah, Houston County. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, you got this map here. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's the yellow down in the corner there. So, as you said, Andy, so it's just a little bit of Wabasha and a very little bit of Goodhue. Yeah. No, no, Houston, no, or Olmstead. Those are a couple pieces of Wabasha in there. Or Olmstead. So what it actually does, it Wabasha County, it includes um, Wabasha County all the way up to the Zumbro River watershed and then it skips over that and includes the, the city of Wabasha, that little narrow strip along the river there. And then down into uh, Houston County it's the La Crescent watershed so it's just that little knob that goes down into the corner, northeast corner of Houston County. We probably better let Bill know. Bill, you're nominated and approved well, for figured. it. Well, I figured. I should have stayed in there longer. <laughs> no, that's what you, you weren't here to say no, so. <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Okay, great. Do you want to make I'll make a motion then that Bill and Jerry serve as our primary and alternate, and they can work that out on which one wants to be which. Oh, Bill's primary. He was already appointed. Yeah, it's okay. appointment, but the, the Bill motion. Bill primary and Jerry alternate then. Do we need a motion? He just you want a motion on the allowing them both to go. And both be going and get paid so that we're well informed on any decisions that are being made. Okay, so. All in favor of the motion? Do we have a second? Second. To uh, that was made? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
motion carries on that. Um, they're going to start after the first of the year, you figure? Well, we're hoping to have one meeting yet this year just oh. to get some of the things going. Uh, we hope to put together a MOA um, and then also kind of start discussing the organization format, how they want to do it. Do they want to do a joint powers agreement? Do they want to do a joint powers board? Do they, you know, what, how do they want to form? But that would be for the implementation phase. For the planning yeah. phase, it's just an MOA oh, that's, to that's agree to plan together, um, to put together the plan. Um, so the, the governance discussion is during the planning process to decide how governance would happen during the implementation stage. They'd also discuss um, you know, how the policy committee works. That's all part of the MOA. The MOA also covers um, who the grant administrator or primary contactor would be and who the fiscal agent would be. So since we're the principal, we're, we're the fiscal agent for the fiscal river. agent for Red River, we wouldn't be for the Crescent. So yeah, we're the the staff's recommendations would be for Winona County to be the grant administrator. That's what Fillmore SWCD is the administrator for the root, and then that uh, Red River SWCD would be the fiscal agent for the Ms. Winona La Crescent, which I call Winmac. <laughs> Trying to get that name going. Yeah. Um, the Red River would be the fiscal agent, just like we are for the root, and it kind of goes with I think what Andy had recommended last time on the uh, root that we use a smaller somebody that has a smaller um, input on the uh, watershed, so they're not the fiscal agent isn't the one using all the money to. And kind of some of the work that we've been doing with the root, uh, we've been very impressed with how. Uh, Janice down there handles their, their portion of the rut, and I think she'd do a great job with the, as a fiscal agent down there. Okay, yeah. But that's all just staff's recommendation that'll be up to the policy committee, so it'll be up to Bill and Jerry and anybody else there. Would these meetings be held um, different parts of the watershed or usually at one location? It's up to you, it's up to the policy committee. Our plan is for the first one at least to be in St. Charles. Um, in St. Where? At the community center. In St. Charles? Yep. Well, I'm looking to have an informal meeting to begin with just so that the policy committee members have a chance to get acquainted with each other and understand um, what would be involved with the planning process. So it's, it'll be an informal, no decisions, not until we form officially. Okay. <clears throat> a time frame. Right that I, I would propose that would be uh, due to hold with who all the policy committee members are and what fits their schedules. I can do a preliminary look at um, you know the meeting schedules right now that they already have and kind of make guesses, but it comes down to what works with the policy committee. Yeah. When are the Red Rivers meetings? What about what like time is it? When are they? Nine. Uh, nine in the morning. Yeah. Um, Tuesday. Yeah, usually nine to mm -hmm. uh, eleven or twelve. For, well, it'll be ten, the next ten weeks or so. Mm -hmm. so. All right. I, I'm guessing that there will be daytime meetings. I don't know of any policy committees that meet in the evening. So. Especially in the winter time. Then. Right. water flexible benefit plan for the uh, employees? So we, we have to have a flexible benefit plan um, to, to offer insurance 
And so we have that done a number of years back in 2016. And each year we um, get a hold of the firm that put it together for us and make sure that there's no changes in law or anything like that that requires us to change the, uh, the benefit plan. And um, Wanda got a hold of them and they replied back that everything looks good. Unless we change something in our benefits, um, there's no changes needed to be done in the collect benefit plan. So we need them to approve that? Do you have board action on that? Well, it's just like doing all our policies at the beginning of the year. Well, I guess we just need you to approve the, to keep the flex benefit plan we have now. Okay, we'll have to have a motion for that then. Okay. Cool. So moved. Second. All in favor of the Motion to approve the um, employee benefit plan. Flex. 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 Aye. 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 Oppose. Motion carries. Then we have the public employees insurance program. PEIP. So this this item number three is just to say that yes, we do want to continue offering insurance. It's not. It's not approving any of the actual benefits itself. It's just saying that, yes, we're going to continue going through PEIP for insurance. I move we continue to provide. Cost of this is That's the next the same. That's the next thing. That's number four. This just is to say that, yes, we're going to still okay. provide something. I'll second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries on that. And then the four is the employee benefits. So that's the, uh, this sheet on your, in your packet? We have the uh, um, budget committee meet last week and uh, review um, some options. And basically the insurance um, premiums went up 9.7%. Um, that's the largest increase in the last 10 years. The last 10 years it's been averaging 3%. Um, with everything going on, we kind of figured that something was gonna happen. So we actually, in our draft budget for 2021, we included a 10% increase. So this 9.7% falls within what we had uh, have in our draft budget. Um, the policy, uh, the budget committee, stuck in the policy committee now. <laughs> <laughs> the budget committee met and we had some other options that we were um, offering to them, but our, our recommendation and budget committee recommendation is just to stick with the same thing we've been doing, um, not, um, not changing the percentages or benefits or anything like that. Just stick with our percentages that we've had for a few years now, uh, probably since 2016. Um, if you look at the far right tables on the far right, the yellow it gives you an idea of what people are doing right now. So if everybody continues to participate the way they are now, we have two people taking insurance and two people taking the cash option. And if people continue to do what they are now, um, we'll be within our budget. It, it'd be 52,259 and our budget's 53,000. Um, one of the things that we had talked about is maybe offering more for the cash option to make sure people don't take insurance because if people take insurance, it costs us another $10,000 for each person. Um, but just the way the budget is, everything is, there's, it's not something we really can offer. I might have a silly question here. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> I see on here, um, you have a basic life insurance for $20,000 on each employee. Yep. Does that cover the board members also? It does, but I think it should. Because um, I, I mean, we're paying taxes and stuff. I just, I, I just, 
That's why I'm wondering is because we are paid by the soil and water, so we can check and see if we can get that. It's you know what is. Well, I ain't saying we have to. I'm just wondering if it does. No, it doesn't. This okay. doesn't right. because each individual has to sign up for it. Um, but it is pretty cheap. We didn't we didn't but, ask for the board's information, so maybe it isn't available to them. But we can check. I mean, I can see where it'd be a waste to, unless you're going to have a life for that time. You know. Yeah. I, for I, I, I would probably vote against it because of the fact, to, in my opinion, it'd be a waste of money for us. But um, no, we're not covered now. I mean, so the, not, but not, I mean, other people right. who who work, you know, longer term, of, could make this whole lifetime career. Yeah. The board members usually don't. So if if you want, we can check into it. If, if no, I was just curious if we to, were. Or not. Yeah. I would like to have you check into it, Daryl. Okay. Otherwise, we need a motion to approve. No. Oh, we just yes. got to vote yes. because. Yes. Uh, a second. Motion by the budget. Yep. Call the question then. Okay. Um, there, there's a motion, but not a second yet. Oh, I'll second it. The motion is by the budget committee. Okay, there's I'll no second motion. that motion then. Well, in favor of the motion to um, approve the uh, employee benefits? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll check in to see if the life insurance is available for the board members also. It would be like a term life insurance, so like yeah. when I leave the board, I would, it would, you wouldn't continue to get right. it. Yeah, it would just be while you're on the yeah. Just like for us, it's only while we're employed. If we're okay. gone tomorrow, the life insurance is gone. Um, Some places have the option that if you want to continue it, then you just pay for it out of your own. Yeah. Pay. That's the way I know the board, or the township boards are. They'll have a policy on you. Ours did anyway. I don't know if you, oh, yours didn't? Well, we had a policy, but we didn't have the option. To. Oh, no, we had an option that we could continue paying that on our own if we wanted to. Uh, the uh, solid water resolutions. 2020 discussion. So um, you guys have the resolution packet in front of you. Um, I haven't even looked at it yet myself. They, they basically, we don't have to do anything. It's just for discussion and update. Um, all the resolutions will need your vote by next ne next meeting. And the... Uh, no, I need them. Today. Yeah, I was up until 11.30 the other night doing that, so don't tell me we don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just realized I didn't do a couple of them, so I'm playing catch up. Well, I got the mail, and I got in about 9.30 that night and had supper, so I thought I'd better open this up, and then, God damn it. I did it right away, and I didn't realize I left some of them blank here, so I'm going oh, back, and no, I, I just got it out. I had about two-thirds of it done. done. I got it done, yeah. I got it I was a little bit hesitant, or uh, reluctant, not reluctant, absent-minded, I'll say, other years. Okay. But I seen this the other night when I got in from combine, and I thought, well, I better sit down and do it right away. So if you notice, the uh, you have an option of a yes or a no. There's, there's not the option of discussion. Um, because the meeting, the annual meeting is going to be a virtual meeting, they don't really have the way to, to do really good discussions. So what they're asking is if you have questions about some of them, that you contact the um, author of the of the resolution and talk to them before you make the post. My personal opinion is we should not see this sheet of paper. I don't know who sends this out. You the, or the, the state association. State, yeah. Uh, what don't you like about it? It could sway people. I didn't find it until after I got done. I thought, what the hell is this? And then it goes through, well, you know, you're if you read this first, then you could it'd sway your voting on this, okay. in my opinion. You're, you're seeing what the committee vote is. Right. That, that's what really shouldn't be there, you're thinking. And what I, any other thing that I was involved in, on our resolution system, the committee, which they were always large, would go through the resolutions and they would approve or deny them 
and then the ones that they approved would go to the whole body so anything that these guys would have denied we would have never seen so there's like on this first page there's two of them that were old sunset zero six and they probably should be even on here then yeah so that's you know that's up to you guys as the uh as the board members it's your association so if you want to bring that up i think it'd be how large of a committee i mean i have no idea well i mean it was six people that did this yeah six but that's normal the normal size i couldn't tell you okay because i mean the committees i've been on were 20 30 people i've never is this the first year that they included that i didn't notice that other years no it's always been it's always been in there These guys members of the state board then or yep. Yeah, I, I would assume they, they're members of the state association board. So everybody got there is filled out. The full board. We'll it's just right. give them to Wanda. We have to initially you don't have to sign them. I only have to sign verifying that yes, everything I see okay. is correct. So we just hand this in to you. So my I wrote I wrote, I signed my name but I did it in pencil. <laughs> That's fine. I don't send that one. I have to tell them. Okay. Once yeah. You, you can translate them to another yep, form. Okay. So. Uh, next. So the annual business meeting is going to be uh, virtual on December eighth. So, um, what do we have to have a board action that we're going to? Well, then, well, if you attend, it would be a per diem. If you do it virtually, it would be a per diem. You, you can still turn it in for per diem, so you want to make sure that you allow who you were going to allow, if you're going to allow all five to go to participate. I'm assuming you will, but um, if you guys decide you only wanted three to participate, or... I, <clears throat> I'm not going to go. I would bother to go to a virtual one. So... And if you don't have the facilities, we could set up for maybe probably one or two to do it in our office if you want to do it for that way. Okay. That's going to be all cut and dried anyway. Uh, that, uh, something like that. So we have to uh, make a motion to, uh, to uh, whoever wants to attend here can do that. I got a question before that though. So, with this virtual meeting, you're going to have another vote other than this? They're, they're talking about having another vote on anything. Doesn't uh, it say at the bottom? Uh, on that one sheet, on the, on the letter, at the bottom, the points towards the bottom. Oh, well, yeah, the vote is going to be whether or not to accept the pre convention validity results and and then there's also going to be voting on uh, chair and vice chair and treasurer secretary all that kind of stuff for the, for the board also um, I think there's probably I think they're talking that there's some people on there that won't be won't be there next year so they're who is the president of the um, this year Cleveland was last year. No, he is now. He, he is yet. He is yet. Wait, Wait. is it Dennis Cleveland or what's his first Rowan? name? Roland? Roland. Raleigh. Roland Cleveland. Short guy. Yeah, Raleigh Cleveland. But, uh, I thought you're only on for one year, weren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> he had a poor year because it's been corona yeah. the whole time. <laughs> Not a lot to get done. To be able to do My it. personal opinion is they should postpone this whole thing for until COVID is over or until next year. Because I don't see how we can vote on this stuff and not have healthy discussions at a meeting. Yeah. And you can't do that virtually. And, and they are very concerned about that too. Uh, yeah. we, we had a, um, MASWCD had area managers meeting across the state and we had ours last week or was that this week? Or was it just Monday. Monday. Um, we had ours and, and they are really concerned how this is going to work out. Um, so they don't even know what um, program they're going to use to do the virtual meeting, whether it's going to be Zoom or, or what it's going to be. 
Um, so they're, they're still working and trying to figure all that out too. Um, they, they know it's not gonna be, it's not gonna do justice to normal meetings. Cause it's like, just for example, this increase in the CRP payment limitations, I'm totally against that. Yeah. And they voted six in all favor of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. first off, that's not our Federal, responsibility. It's a federal program, isn't it? Yeah, it's a federal program. Yeah. yeah. But I know too many people. It's what it's going to do is increase absentee landowners. I mean, I I got I can speak from experience. I got a cousin that lives in Arizona, that owns land in Houston County. They bought it. A group of them bought it. Put it all in the CRP to make the payments, and that's their hunting. You know, there's no improvements being done. There is a little bit of tillable land on it, but. You know, it's people that are from the city are coming out and buying these farms. Yeah, and the CRP pays for them. Yep. And I don't think there's that many farms, if my figures were correct that night. They were taking it up to, what, 100,000 or 200,000? 200,000. No, 100,000. That's 500 acres at $200 an acre, correct? So that's a so it's it's currently at fifty thousand. Is that what the cap is? And they want to bring it up to. 100? I believe that's yeah, fifty. If I remember right, <clears throat> I figured that uh, a resolution like that could be uh, introduced, but I don't think that in the total it would ever pass because I've seen this happen. And Andy, that's why I like the short term ones. Well, I don't like that either because that's not soil and waters. Well, but position like to. It's just to affect prices, crop prices. No, it, I didn't mean it in that aspect. I, I agree with that. But it's kind of picking a little bit of lesser two evils uh, because it doesn't allow this land base to get gobbled up by investors and sit idle and it keeps it as farmland. But what it does do is help at least temporarily. We know we can change soils really quick and if we can incentivize a very small time period to allow a rest period. Um, I even bring it biblical, leave your land foul every seven years. Um, you know, we can bring it back to even we know that in a year or two, those things can change very, very quickly and we can break disease and insect cycles. So it doesn't promote this land grab and lay idle, but yet at the same time it does kind of succeed a little bit. I wish they would take out control commodity or the, the commodity pricing. That yeah. that's that that's not our business, so I disagree with that line item in there, but it is probably one of the most economical ways and, and fastest short-term ways to change soil. I've always kind of had a saying, if I was Secretary of Ag for any, any point, I would subsidize a third crop. Just what a third crop will do in a corn bean rotation to change the soil structure and, and, and different carbon bases makes a huge difference let alone if you could have something lay idle and put something in it just very temporarily and then take it back out. We see that with pre plant plant where guys go in and do something. It's what cover crops is doing. So we're basically taking the effects of those short periods and just amplifying them maybe a year or two. And now we're going to introduce that and what that does for the carbon base. So I agree 100% on that. that. I wish they'd just take that whole effect yeah. pricing out. Well, I could see it being worded to have the FSA look into doing this. Exa yes. In a, you're too young to remember this, but we used to have set aside our no, I, diversion No, I, I grew up with that. Oh, okay. Yep. Where we had to leave 10% of our corn ground each year. Mm -hmm. And and for me, that was perfect because you had, it had to be hay ground yep. that you didn't plow up to put in the corn. Yep. You could haul manure on it all summer long. Yep. And then plow all that green manure and the manure and then, down and build and soil. The, and then when it got dry in August, they usually opened it up so you could cut it for well, anyway. Well, <laughs> I never could because I had manure on it. But I mean, yeah. same principle what you're talking it, it about. Is. But it really is. Yeah, it's yeah. an FSA program, not soil and water. Well, the problem with I can see the benefits for soil and water. Yes. But it, it, for but us to implement it and do it and pay for it. I don't think we should. What I don't want to, what I don't want, I hope that's where we get with it. What I don't want to do is strike it down so it's no longer a conversation. Because to me, that is a faster way to improve soils than this whole set of, this right. whole CRP 10 year big commitment, pay out of our rear end to get people to do it. Um, it really mimics 
what we're doing with cover crops in rotation. And uh, so for me, if I'm going to spend my dollar as a taxpayer, I believe just having done this for so many years that that's a better way to do it. And I did, I agree. I don't think we can take that on, but the conversation needs to the be. The conversation there. needs to keep. I, I agree. I strike this down. It's going to say, "Hey, we don't believe in the concept." So for me, it was. I'm with you on one side, and I think we're together on the other side. It's the verbiage we need to carry. Exactly, that and that's why I, I don't think we can. This is not the proper way to handle something like this because no. this discussion should be with the whole whole group, and yes. you can't have that virtually or. Well, not first. But I mean, that's beside the point. This is the way it's going, but yep. I don't Another like the benefit of the um, short term set aside, and we've used it all the time um, when it was around, is if somebody wanted to build a waterway, they put that area into the set aside, and we built the waterway in June or July instead of in April or May. And you, you waited till all those rain, those heavy rain events were gone, runoff events and did it when you could actually get it established before you had that next big rain event. Yeah. And it really worked and the people weren't having to destroy corn or beans or anything to do it. They had it and set aside and you could build it whenever the rain was put. The, the, I think the biggest thing is, and it's probably the positive outcome that I look forward to with something like this is it's going to reopen up farmers' eyes as to the importance of diversity, because they're going to see the change. So oftentimes with CRP, being in the, you know, I know you guys have probably all had CRP and a few acres here or there and had to deal with it a time or two. Guys like myself, we deal it with hundreds of farms over and over and over and get to see it over and over and over and over and over, not just maybe a few times in our life on our own farm. And the biggest complaint is, I've got sod, I can't get it broke down, it, it doesn't produce good corn, and what do they do? They go out and dump a whole bunch of nitrogen on it. And cyclize all that carbon-based and humus that took 10 years to build up, and they redestroy it. So what did we really accomplish? <laughs> because it's, there's, there's issues when we, when we let something lay fallow that long, too. So, to me, the short term, we can do a lot of really good. We just have to figure out, in, in my opinion, we could scrap the 10 year program and go to this, and we would do much better because it's going to train the farmer's brain as to what it means to go back into that rotation and figure out a way to improve their soil health rather than looking at this great big thing oh man, I got to be out of business for 10 years. So, I, I, it, to me, it's going to retrain the farmer's brain. Because right now, I, I think it's. If I was a farmer in 10 years, I mean, why would I want to do that? You know, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I can predict the market a little bit two, three years. I can't predict the market in 10 years. So, so do we have a motion to um, for the uh, supervisors to attend the virtual? Yes, we need to. Um, can, I, can I interject one time? It does say in here too, Andy, that um, MA, um, so the MASWCD should ask the National Association of Conservation Districts to pursue a federal set-aside program administered by the Farm Service Agency to idle 20% of all corn meat. So it's actually saying to go to the FSA. Um, now, whether we just taken the initiative to do that, I still think that they need to strike the farm commodities, stabilized farm commodities. I just don't believe that's the point of this. We're not in the business to stabilize things. You know, the, the, the slight yeah. terms. So. See, and, and on other resolutions committees that I've been on, that's what we do is we go through, fine tune them. Kind of like what we do at our mm -hmm. divisional meeting when we, or district meeting when we write them up. Yep. We, if we would have had that in front of us, we could have done, modified it to what we feel right. it should be. I, the first thing I would have brought up is get rid of the farm cut. What, what they're doing is they're trying to play off from emotion and, you know, yeah. with this, and, and it could be a potential benefit. But the reality of it is, is that if you really think about it, if we improve soil structure and we improve our land base, there's a pretty good chance in conjunction with genetics and fertility programs and management that we'll probably have more bushel. So it'll offset 
whatever we take out will be offset by whatever more we gain. However, that whole system should be more regenerative. So I hate the word sustainable. I don't like to stay the same. I want to put improve. So that's my first take on it. Pretty. I'm actually pretty adamant. I think there was somebody in the meeting. You and I, yeah, I that agree, last one, I and I tried to kind of explain that on that virtual one. A lot of that made good sense. But to get the farmers to participate in a, any kind of a set aside, it all depends on the commodity prices. If, if they did away with your um, our counties and that kind of stuff and went to a set aside, that way that's the way it used to be. If you want to participate, you had to leave ten or twenty percent of your corn I know, but people, Farmers idle. aren't going to participate when beans are ten dollars a bushel. Mm. You know. And you get two hundred to three hundred dollars an acre even at the but I don't think I don't think that. It's oh yeah. If they want some of that government money, they're gonna to have to participate. It ain't gonna change the acreage. A lot of farmers don't want to deal with the government. I know it, but it's not gonna right now there's a hundred percent of the acreage being planted with our county and those those that type of program. This, if you get even only ten percent of participation, yeah. to leave ten percent lay, those are large numbers. I look at it, and maybe Leo, this might help you out. Uh, you're, you're exactly right. When grain prices are high, I've seen people literally tear up all the terraces and strips and everything. They right do. over the right, 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 right over right. I can give you names around here, people that did it. But at the same time, uh, they're not always high. And my hope in this program is it accelerates landowners' knowledge on how we can alter soils and make them better and make them healthy and lessen erosion and create better infiltration and drainage and runoff because I have seen it many, many times what short-term land building does. People that have gotten crop, crop land for rent, I even know people that have made demands and people have come to them and say, we want you to run our ground because we see what you're doing. And that person will say, I'll run your ground but guess what? I'm not going to pay you for it for the first year or two. And I'm going to do nothing but build it up. And then when I get into it, then that's profitable to farm. And they'll cost average out in 10 years. And that's taken it to the extreme. And people sign up for it. And they're the people that have the money that can afford to do it. But that's not everybody. The hope is that, and again, it fits into that, not everybody's going to do it and beans and corn are high. But it should, to me, what it will do is for the people that are looking for the next step, they're going to begin to recognize what this program or what this could do. And just like the cover crops, the idea isn't to get them on a hook and keep them there forever. It's to use this through education. If we can frame it right and say, hey guys, not only is this a tool for your farm, but this is also a way to educate you and show you the difference of what alternative farming practices can do for your mainstay in these crops. And now we can grow 75 bushel of that $10 beans instead of 60 or 65 bushel of that $10 beans and that still pencils out the 10% you have in this program and outdoes it. And the smart managed farmers, the ones that are succeeding, they'll pencil that out and say, wow, this makes sense. And so uh, the educational aspect of it, I think, is Maybe the governing the key. Whereas is in that should be um, maybe worded like whereas it's been proven that if you do idle your soil for say three years or so, you will see, you know, soil structure improvement, um, greater carbon sequestration, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, I mean, you just think about how you can see it just in the prevent plant years, you know, just that short amount of time, and really it's cover crops for just a really dumbed down version of this whole scenario. It's just a very short term subsidized alternative crop. This would be just a little longer and CRP to me is almost too long. It's too detrimental. There's too, when it comes out, that sod base and land base, sure there's some really good things. Complex carbons will build soil, uh, but um, I just don't know if the economics in today's farming play for it. And I think you make a very good point that it it creates a land bank for people that really don't have any intentions to farm. When I, <clears throat> this year I got two crops off, but I take the worst field of hay I have, spread manure on it, 
But then a neighbor goes, why ain't you cutting that third crop on that field? It's the best looking hay you had. So I went from the worst field that I had to the best looking hay field I had just by spreading manure on it, you know, after I took second crop off. So it, it don't take long to regenerate that soil by letting it lay and putting a little fertilizer on it. Now I'll plow that all down this fall. You know, I'm gonna have all that organic matter in there, so. Uh, even though I don't get paid for a diversion, I kinda, <laughs> I take one or two crops off and then I start, you know, of hay and then start doing it. Well, that. the hardest part with, uh, with a, I'm gonna say a modern grain farmer is they just don't have the need for that third crop. So what this really does is produces a, a, a viable option for a third crop, um, but short enough term where it's can play into the rotation of what they're doing, but yet long enough to show them the results and the benefits of what it can do for their farm. Yeah. What number are we on, Bill? We're on number six, and they need a uh, motion. So motion we need a motion. To the only three can be well, any, no, 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 we, any number, so but just oh, any number. motion so that we, when it comes time, that we can attend that virtually. Uh, I'll make a motion that we can all attend it. Second, if it works out for everybody. Okay. All in favor of the motion for the convention? Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, and when is that meeting? Usually December eighth. Yeah, that's the annual meeting that's just December 8th in the morning only is their plan right now. And it's, um, they're not alone. The AMC is doing the same thing. Um, I believe theirs is December 7th. Just think of the loss of the revenue for all these hotels. Yep. Just fantastic. How they, uh, what's going to make this stop? I'm really, I don't know. It sounds like <clears throat> they are still paying at least part of the hotel bill. Really? Yeah. So okay. this meeting is? It'll be Tuesday the 8th. You yeah. have more info at our next meeting, correct? Right? They said more to come. Yeah. I haven't seen anything yet, <clears throat> so. Like I said, they're really working on trying to figure out how they're gonna do it, so. We're gonna move on to the CARES Act Fund. I don't want a county request, an update. Um, so I, I, we talked about the CARES Act last, last month. You said go ahead and, and look into it. Um, I, I contacted a consultant that came in and reviewed the site and is supposed to be putting together a bid on what it would cost to upgrade the network so we could work virtually also to uh, upgrade to, to get two tough books and then what we were looking at just one laptop because the one would be for Wanda that she doesn't go out in the field to, we don't have to spend as much on that. Um, and then any other peripheral things that we might need that we do, I don't know about, but the computer people do, <laughs> that might need. So they're supposed to be giving us a bid. Um, we were hoping to have it by today, but it didn't come in yet. Um, what I was wondering is if uh, if we can get approval to go ahead and purchase this stuff and submit it for CARES Act as long as it's going to be covered. If it's not covered, we wouldn't purchase, but as long as if, when we find out what the bid is, we can submit it and see if it's going to be covered. And then if we could go ahead and purchase it because um, the deadline, I believe, is November 15th. And if we waited till the next board meeting, we'd have like three days. I think that would be something that we should do, don't you think? Yeah. It's it, a move. It would okay. be no more than ten. It would be ten thousand or less. My hope is it's more around five or six thousand. But um, with the tough books, it's brought the cost up. So the cap for the CARES Act money is ten thousand for for us. Okay. So. Um, Go ahead and do that. Did you have? Yeah, we have a motion. Do, motion and second. It's, do we have to have a, a motion? Yeah, okay. It's all done already. You just got to say all. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And then um, we can uh, 
There isn't much to talk about the aquatic evasives, is there? Yeah. Um, actually, I didn't bring it over, but <laughs> Amanda is, if you remember, she had caught some uh, rusty crayfish in Money Creek, and she's caught a number of them in there, and then all of a sudden she wasn't catching any. So she's not sure if there were only a few, or if for whatever reason she just wasn't catching anymore. Um, if, you, if you'd like, after the meeting, I could go grab one of them and bring it over, it's in the freezer, but those things are huge. They're a lot bigger than the crayfish around here, the, the native crayfish. Um, and they also, what they do is they burrow into the bank, and if you got enough of them in one area, that bank starts to wash out. And when it does, you can see all those burrows in the bank where. where you think somebody would release them, something like that, or does that come up the, from the river? I don't know. I don't know enough. Amanda probably could tell you. I don't know enough about it to, to say. My guess it's is the that Russians. they moved up, but I don't know. Russians did it. <laughs> sure, it wasn't China. It's funny that they wouldn't just be in the money in that area rather than. Well, so she's she had a trap that she's set in different streams all all this time and never caught any. Um, when they actually stepped on this one and saw that there was a rusty, she set the trap and didn't catch any. She did some research and found another trap. She set that and that's where she's been catching with this new trap. So. She is thinking of going back to some of these other streams and, and using that new trap in there and see if she missed things just because the trap wasn't working. So they the can area. survive the winter? They, yep. they burp, did they? Yeah, they burrow all into the bank. And oh, yeah. okay. I believe I could be wrong. That's my understanding is what they do. So. But they're, they're big. <laughs> That one was at least six inches long. So my wife said they used to eat crayfish. Are these edible? I don't know. I, I assume so. And they're bigger. That's why I asked her if we're going to have a crawdad fry or something. Uh -huh. Wild them up. <laughs> Find out if they're edible. <laughs> so is there any, butter on them any more in the yeah. aquatics? Nope, that's all I have. So uh, any now about the uh, buffer law? I've uh, been doing the compliance monitoring, um, probably a quarter or a third of the way done with this year's monitoring, and it's been going real good. There's a couple that I need to do further investigation that just not sure, or for the most part, what's happening is the stream moves. And, yeah, um, you get that big rain event, and just one of them that we had last year, um, he had a really nice buffer in there. I went out last year and looked at it, and it was completely gone in one section. The bank had gone that whole 50 foot and was back into his corn just in one one summer. And that actually is one that the DNR is, was already had on their list to do some bank stabilization because yeah. they've had problems. They also have an easement through that section. Um, they just haven't gotten to it yet this year, but hopefully the next. Next year, we'll get to it and we'll get that whole section done. Is that on the bank or what? Bank that, on. that was, oh, I think that's the eastern Pine Creek okay. that goes through New Hartford. And okay. Yeah, as you say, which Pine Creek? Yeah. <laughs> down, I know where you're talking about, probably. Where that bank is about 10, 15 feet tall. It's pretty tall, yeah. Yeah, it's all beautiful black dirt right down to the water. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yes. and that all goes, and that's, I think if I remember right, it was Steve Dukowski that time we were up there two years ago talking about sediment in the river and all this and that. And he had a picture of some spot like that and says, we got to get the DNR to fix this because that's where, there's more water, dirt going, going from, from that bank yep. than there is from a lot of thousands of acres yep. of cropland. And it, it's out of our control, basically. Because we can't, the, the landowner can't go put riprap in there without getting a permit from the DNR. Yep. So the DNR should be the ones fixing it. That was his point that day. And I agree with so that. If, if it's been known for years, how come the DNR, do the wheels turn that slow that they can't get some project like that 
taken care of. They, they don't have the money to do all the stream banks that need to be done. Huh. Well, uh, they, what, they, what they do is they, they keep get, raising my license fees. They get some grants <laughs> from, from that fund, but they also work with Trout Unlimited, and Trout Unlimited gets other grants that they use, and they combine them to do a bunch of streams like this. They've done a lot in the last 10 years or so. Trout Unlimited. Yeah. yeah. Trout, well, it's a combination of Trout Unlimited. Yeah. 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 They did a big That's section from, of white water. Uh, wealthy, do wealthy donors, I imagine. Their child's are limited. They, could be. Well, they, they also get gr other grants yeah. that, uh, yeah. that we're not eligible for. But the DNR did a big section by Crystal Springs this summer, too. And that really looks nice. Yeah, when they get done with it, it looks great. But uh, it seems like it takes them forever to get something done. Yeah. You would think a fund that's named Clean Water <laughs> would. Should be used for yeah. that. They've got hundreds of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where, where else can they use their money any better? Yeah. 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 I mean, you got the guy, the county's fighting with the Corps engineer where all that sand is going to go. If you, they slow that process of it going in there, they wouldn't have such a pile all out of there. I, uh, who the hell was I talking to? I don't know. I mean, you guys are all probably familiar with Houston down there with that dredge. Yeah. That brings all the sand up. County and then gets all that sand for nothing, and it slows that all going down the river. So why doesn't the state do that every tributary going into the Mississippi River? It'd be a hell of a lot cheaper than dredging, wouldn't it? They get a byproduct out of, byproduct out of the process, and be cheaper and less expensive than dredging the river every every year. Most of it comes out of the Chippewa, and all they would have to do is put a dredge in the Chippewa about a mile up, buy a farm up there, and use that farm to put all the spoil on. They'd have 80% of the problem. Yeah, but I mean, how, how much of that would actually go back into either construction, Sanford County, and you know, roads? All of that that gets pulled out down there, most of that goes for sandy roads during the winter. Very little of it actually goes for At Houston, you mean? At Houston, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's a need for it. Why do you okay. just don't simplify the process of the whole thing? Okay. And that's um, a little bit off our subject, but it's still it's soil and water. Um, <laughs> Daryl? Yep, that's it for buffer. Okay, so we're going to move on to the. Uh, where, where nobody showed up today, so we can. Well, move actually, on. the commissioner. Oh, you're going to take the place of the commissioner? Yep, if I can. Okay. Uh, but Steve wasn't able to make it, so he had contacted Chris Meyer, um, and she wasn't able to make it either, so she contacted me. Okay. <laughs> um, and what she wanted to just let you guys know, the, the CARES Act money, there is CARES Act money available through the Chamber of Commerce for sm not just small businesses, but also for farmers. So farmers should talk to them if they um, have experiencing losses because of the COVID, and it could be because they had to destroy animals. It could be, you know, a lot of different things. Maybe it's because of their their uh, workers weren't able to continue working or whatever. Um, but if, if anything like that, farmers are supposed to contact the Winona Area Chamber of Commerce. Their website is winonachamber.com. And there's a button on there to click for CARES Act. And oh, yeah. you can look at it, it kind of tells what, how you'd be eligible and stuff. How in the world could COVID-19 affect the farmers and well, loss of animals? That's ridiculous. Well, That's something them, that... They, meat plants. Yeah, meat oh, plant, meat oh plant that way. Oh, okay. They have to destroy their yeah. Yep. yeah. If you have to have to destroy them that way, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's been the biggest one that I've heard around here was... was a lot of the hogs, hog farms had some problems. Yeah, but that um, that problem is kind of taken care of, isn't it? No, I mean they've got on top of that. I don't think I don't. Well, beef that. prices are still depressed a little. But I mean, well, there, there was some payment through the federal, the, through FSA that helped with that. Yeah, I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't know. She just wanted me to let let you guys know. And, um, but that's something that could be. Uh, Somebody could take advantage of that unless they have a way of verifying. Yeah. That yeah, they, you have to you have to qualify. Yeah. Um, there's also Semcra 
Southeast Minnesota Multi-County Housing and Re Redevelopment Authority, they have some CARES Act funds to them also uh, for individuals. And uh, I, if you, if there are problems making mortgage payments because they're unemployed or um, septic system pumping, lot rent, homeowners insurance, utility bills, things like that, um, they could apply for that also. And I think that maximum is $5,000. Um, I have a flyer here too, if anybody wants to grab one. So I just wanted to let you, let you guys know that those are out there yet. And like I said, the chief was pretty sure that the deadline is November 15th or something like that, right around the middle of November. Okay. Uh, we don't have Sue not coming. No, nope, anything. Um, any supervisor has well, something to bring? No, Sheila. 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 Oh yeah, we can't forget Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Well, that's um, just an uh, update from Kay. She couldn't be here today, but uh, we've got these interns that are working on the uh, Bitters Oriana Bitters Street removal projects, and they did a media campaign. Uh, on the southern border of Winona and also with Houston County and getting some good press release and TV and uh, newspaper coverage. And also the work that they've been doing on Stone Point, um, there were some webcams set up by hunters and so they put notices next to them letting them know that hunting is not allowed in Stone Point, you know, because Kay was concerned about having volunteers and the interns out there and, and somebody's hunting. Um, and, and they're not supposed to hunt there. But anyway, one of the hunters called back and he wasn't aware that hunting wasn't allowed and he was on an adjacent property. And, and with a conversation with Kay, he said, well, yeah, I've seen some of that stuff growing over here on this other property and I can remove that for you. And <laughs> Kay said, so he's gonna get trained and be a volunteer to remove some more in the streets. So that, that was kind of a good thing that came out of it that we're, we're getting a couple more volunteers that are hunters because they're concerned about the visibility and the there, ability to be able to hunt because there's no hunting allowed on stone is that it's always been that way i believe so yeah so is it is like a refuge or what pardon is it a refuge why isn't there no hunting i don't know it says no hunting it's on and then they complain about there's so many deer. I mean, if you don't allow hunting, that's what's going to happen. Well, I know that they did, you know, some hunting there with the... Um, they had some special hunts yeah, there. Yeah, special hunting. Where's this place at? The, the old landfill. Oh, yeah, Murphy's old one. Yeah. It's, it, that's I all fenced, so you don't have access. Cause I got, see uh, it's right above nothing. the quarry. Right, the road is right above the quarry where I go in. Yeah. I didn't ever knew where it was. It's at Stone Point. Road or something there. I don't know that's where that. That's the lower access. There's access up above too. Yeah. yeah. Huh. But there's a, they also have the uh, sheriff's department has their training and shooting range oh, up there and stuff. Yeah. And that might be. So it is in a very big area. That must be. It's, it's oh, a pretty good area. Three hundred acres, acres or better. Oh, well, that isn't very big. Well, it's probably more than that. <laughs> yeah. It's all relative. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about like the Whitewater area. Where oh, down no, 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 no. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing like that. And it's all, what, they put in native grasses over the top or whatever? They did some, they, we, we actually worked with them uh, back in the early 2000s. Um, they had a lot of washing out there and we worked with them and put in some terraces, some diversions, some rock shoots, and then planted a lot of it to prairie. And our Whitewater meeting is next Thursday on the 15th. And that's so speaking of that, and they always had their tire collection. Steve ain't here, but they were going to do those tire collections again? I know that's, well, you got to talk to Kay about that. I think right? that's Ann who's usually the one working yeah. with that, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I know. I haven't heard any conversation about that. So. They should have a tire collection. Uh, There's a lot of farms that have... Mm -hmm. Semi loads of tires. My son in law's got tires laying everywhere that she doesn't need. I, don't, I mean, and it's just a source of mosquitoes and stuff. And yeah. mm -hmm. They used to do it spring and fall, didn't they? Or just in spring? 
like they well, have this two different ones. Tires and then appliances. Yeah, but uh, I, we always took tires over to this one. That's why I know what this place is looks uh, like. They had there. appliance. Uh, I just took some down to yeah. Miller's the other couple months ago. They yeah, they had one down at either Volkman's or at uh, Mueller. Mueller. Mueller Scrap, yeah. So, but yeah, they do the appliance yet because they're very easy to throw off into the road ditches. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons they do this. But uh, the tires, I can contest to say that I'm getting a pile of them built up around my farm too. <laughs> because there's nowhere to go with them. Well, if it wouldn't be so cheap, I suppose you could take them. They don't want you to bury them. You know, get rid of them. But what do you, what do, you do with them? They just lay like there. The rest of the what? What would a big tractor cost to get rid of them? Nothing. You could take two of them, I think. Two tractor tires, ten car tires, something like that, per person. To get. where? That's the way they used to do this. I know. Otherwise, it's for like a car tire, it's five bucks a piece down at Browns. Tractor tire. Tractor tire would probably be 20, I don't know. There. Okay. Um, I was going to say that the this year, I can't remember when the fall colors were as good as they are this year. Depends on where you are. There's some places well, they were green. just fantastic the last yeah. couple of days. I was driving up uh, yesterday. I was driving up I ninety four. Well, yeah, I was down by the Dells, but the the. Color trees were just red and orange and yeah. fantastic. Because I think it's because we've had quite a bit of sun this year. Okay, um, Daryl. I asked him. They have nothing. Oh, okay. ah. Bill. We're trying to get together a area seven. Maybe. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Daryl. Um, well, if, if you look at the agenda, the one thing I want to mention is the bone meeting um, last month. We had a presentation on the Carson Education Tool put out by MPA, and it's really good. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, there's some posters on the, ground, on the floor over here. Those are some of the things that they produced, and what we'll be doing is having that at the fair and things like that. But they also have videos that they produce that talks about karst and the flow of water and, and things through the, the karst geology. And they have it broke down into three different, just like the posters, three different areas. The, the glacial till area of the karst, which would be like Mauer County, Butterfield Moore, yeah. Homestead. Um, then the, the kind of the central karst area where more of the sinkholes themselves are, which would be part of an owner. Um, by Wolmstead and quite a bit of Fillmore County, and then the, the Bluffland Karst region. And if you, if you guys want to look at it, um, the, the MPCA website has, has a link to it where you can go and look at those videos. Otherwise, maybe next month, if you guys want, I can bring, bring the videos in and show it to you during the meeting. That almost sounds like a repeat of what we had the last meeting. Well, we, they were still working on them, remember? We, yeah. We had to give some input. But they were doing, yep. making the video and all that, yeah. So they're done now, and they, they really are good. I, yeah. they, they have three short ones of each of those, and then they also have two long, longer length. I think the, the short ones, I think, are two to three minutes long. So what is, what is the bottom? Why are they, why are they, are they showing why the ground, the, Water gets nitrates in it, or what's the bottom? Well, why, why we want to be careful what what we do on the ground. You know, basically why we do what we do at the district right here um, to help protect the groundwater and also to show the the uh, connection between groundwater and surface water um, to show that you know what's happening on this stream can get into the groundwater real fast, or what's in the groundwater actually comes out into the stream real quick too. Um, just kind of show. Um, it was put on. It was put together mainly by that Kevin Keener, and he's he's done a lot, a lot of work with uh, nitrogen studying in the region, and that that's kind of his his main purpose for it was for showing how why we want to protect the, nit the water from the nitrogen. Not to overdo. I mean, the application of. Well, it might be that, or it might be the buffers, or it might you know a lot of different things you can do. 
<clears throat> they're um, making these videos to show county commissioners, schools, um, any farm group, corn growers association, soybeans, just to educate people on how the water flows and how it affects what we do on top. The one meeting that we were at is these disappearing streams, they, they call them, where it'll be on top and it'll be disappearing and it won't come up for two, three miles somewhere else. Really? It goes underground. And they put dye in it to, to track this stuff. That was probably about a year ago. I mean, these ball meetings are really interesting and, uh, and the way this water flows and stuff. But the, these films that he's talking about, it's all for, for people to get educated on, on how this water flows and how it affects everything. It's funny that um, we have two states, Wisconsin and Minnesota. Minnesota has adopted the buffer law. In Wisconsin, there isn't such a thing. And the topography of the ground a lot that I drive is a lot the same. So why, funny that the Democratic governor of Wisconsin hasn't picked up on that. I mean, there is no talk that I know of that ever being adopted or even talked about in Wisconsin. So why the difference? I mean, the water is the same. Farming is basically the same. But there, they farm right up to the creeks. How many states have this buffer law? Just Minnesota? It's the only one I know of, but I, I haven't yeah. paid attention. And it, I don't know what better. Iowa would be a similar yeah. situation too. Yeah. They don't okay, got land and streams. Oh, I, I got a question. I can talk to you about it afterwards. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, just so, quick, I'd like to have you bring those films next meeting. Okay. Yeah. If they're only three minutes, you know, we can watch yep. those you three films. Watch them now. Even the longer one, if it's not too long. I think eventually they're going to have them on their yeah. web page. Right? They're, they're on their web page. You, they're already. You can go yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I downloaded them, so because we don't have a signal or not a very good signal here, um, I downloaded them so we could just um, but project them. You know what? But I'm kind of getting at is um, these professionals you call up. They study this stuff and they come out with these studies and what it does is it, it makes farming just about impossible nowadays to to do anything if you're going to do any kind of egg uh, and especially animal agriculture in this corner of the state that they're, they're always going to use that against the, the person that's um, there's always potential of of, uh, of this uh, contamination and that, that's not always true well, sure it is. I mean, the first time, the first thing that everybody does. I, I, know, I, I know what you're hearing, and I know where you're coming from. But there's Greg Klinger and him and I have had some. I know, but pretty um, good discussions, and he works for the University of Minnesota, correct? Yeah, those. He, he does all this testing, and he claims that the farmers, in my opinion, this is what I got out of them that whatever we do is harming the groundwater. Sure, whatever we do, you know. So I asked him, I says, how often in the spring of the year after nitrogen applications, whether it's liquid manure or chemical fertilizers, where these drain tiles are, how often do you go out and test them? And he says, all the time. I says, okay, how much does it peak after a heavy rain after fertilizer applications? He said, right out. Sometimes there's no peak whatsoever. So when they're telling you that this is all going down, he's testing the water coming out of these drain tiles yeah. and there's no increase in nitrogen. You don't ever hear that though. In the, no, you in don't. The, in the news, never. And, and the one resolution was from the bomb. And I don't know when they passed that, but I wasn't too happy with that one being I'm a bomb member. <laughs> you said sometimes, Andy. How about the other times? He doesn't, he, that's why I was wondering, what's the percentages and stuff, and he never gave me an answer. And uh, that's why I feel it's important that somebody from our area is on these meetings, as a farmer, that's why we have to that's raise why. these questions when he's talking about this stuff. That's just like the, uh, might have been the same meeting that down Iowa State, they've been growing corn on this field for 20 years without ever putting nitrogen or fertilizer on it. But he never said what the yields were. You know, last year I had him between Isaac and I, we had a 
conflict on what we were planting in one field. It only got the potash, no nitrogen. I only got about 75 bushels an acre off of that field because there was no nitrogen added. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't. Yeah. So you can't tell me that you can no. grow corn and get a proper yield without fertilizer. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to let you guys know, I, I'm assuming you guys are aware of this, the sand mound down in Homer. The, <clears throat> the Corps of Engineers wants to haul a lot of it out of there up to this quarry, to uh, Yudki Quarry up on uh, above Homer Valley. And there's a county commissioners are having a hearing on that next Tuesday. The county asked me to review the stormwater pollution prevention plan on that, um, where the sand's gonna be up at the Yetki Quarry. Um, so I reviewed that and, and they have a really good plan on how they're gonna control the erosion and stuff like that. As long as everything's followed, I, I don't see any problem. But it, it is gonna be a contentious, probably gonna be a contentious hearing. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I was part of the quarry part of it, not all the hauling, the trucks, and anything. We, we have nothing to do with that. Is that That's that, what they're going to be upset about. Is that, I think so, yeah. Is that I can't see that they're going to have 500 trucks a day. Is um, that pile right along 61? Yeah, they're yeah. right at Homer. There's a b couple loaders in there yesterday went by. Well, they, they're hauling out of there all the time. But like, it's like you said, for the county, the county takes a lot of sand out of there for, for the roads. Uh, a lot of it goes out for construction. But the, they are trying to get it down to no higher than 30 feet. So they need to haul a lot out of there and they, they, want, they want to haul it up to the Yetki Quarry and then they would sell it out or haul it out of there for other things over the rest of the year. But they would have about a two or three week period where they're just hauling continuously. So they're opposing the truck traffic? That, that's yeah. the biggest concern is. So how are you going to move traffic. it if you don't have truck traffic? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> But I just wanted to make you guys aware that I, I did comment, I did review the SWIFT and commented on that. It's funny that you don't have Case protesters down time. along Winona there by pennies protesting all the trucks coming in with soybeans. Shh, don't give them damn <laughs> ideas. Look at what they did to the frac sand trucks. I know. <laughs> and yet, what's the difference? Um, There's a lot of politics in that too. If, if Winona County would have spent $200,000 and had the railroad put in a crossing signals there that could be open to public use as far as loading sand out of there. And that pile would disappear because all your construction people would go down there with their trucks and get the free sand just for hauling it away. But somebody didn't want to spend the $200,000 to put the crossing in. I don't know how readily available that information is not either, but it's that's what I've been told anyway. I don't know anything about that. Because <laughs> now you got to have a Union Pacific, I think it's rails, or whose is it? Um, Canadian Pacific. Canadian. They have to have a, a guy there to watch for trains to allow trucks to cross those streets. Yeah, because it's not, uh, there's no protection. I right. Mean, Two hundred thousand dollars would eliminate that. You problem. got five hundred trucks guaranteed. One would get hit sooner or later if there wasn't arms. You know, because yesterday came up there and there was, this train was for long. There was engine in the middle of it. Yeah. It was so long. Um, just a couple other quick things. The the area seven is hoping to have a meeting in November sometime. They just they're not sure when yet and how they're going to do it. They, they're hoping to be able to do a hybrid, so some people can be in person and some people can be virtual. And on that note, they're also looking for they're going to need a new director, new co-director, and a new secretary and treasurer because there's a number of them that aren't running for district board anymore. So there's gonna be a pretty big turnover at the top of the hearing association. Yeah, I told Bill that uh, I'm not running. You said you're too busy because you have one water issue one plan? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a meeting just about every month. Yeah. Then you're on a committee you know, so then there's those meetings, so I'm pretty tired. Well, you should have the time to do it. <laughs> I, got, I got other things to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I thought I had had more free time after we sold the cows, so I haven't <laughs> seen that yet neither. And the only other thing I was just going to mention, um, <clears throat> normally I would have my tree orders out any day now. Uh, we just got notice yesterday or day before that the DNR nursery won't have their orders available till mid-November. So I may end up just going with the private nursery again to make sure we get our trees and start the sales. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but they are very good trees, and I don't remember any complaints about them last year. So we may just go ahead with the private nursery instead. That's all I have. So you're going to be closed next week? So it looks like... Oh, uh, 12th and 11th, November 11th. Other than that, uh, our meeting should be adjourned. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Absolutely. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. What meeting is canceled? Over. Um,